like to speak to sponsors because I think when people invest money in an organization, there's a reason behind it. And so I just want to understand why they're willing to put in that investment into Asaba. I've also recently qualified, so I'm keen to find out from some of the people who have qualified with me because I was at VIT and there were some people, friends who were there at VIT with me. So I just want to find out how their journey was relative to mine. You gave your daughter Forbes. <laughs> <laughs> that she word, huh? must find people who are going to study a curious science. Yes. Why? I had to find black girls to conquer this thing. Why was it important to you? Because we are not going to change this world. We are not going to change this economy unless we are skilled and some of the skills what happened is this I joined the board of discovery and I looked around there were no blacks there were no black girls and I looked at the senior positions that were held by actions and I was saying what are we doing to change this and you know how it is transformation is hard it's tough. transformation is so hard I found no Gwanda and I said no Gwanda I have to work with you from um, the South African Actuary yeah. Development Sadie. Program I have to work with you. She's like, well, I have a problem. The girls that I get, when they get to university, they dump the, the cause because yeah. they say it's too much hard work. Their friends are doing the CA route and it's easier. And, and I said, okay, no wonder, I'm going to bring girls that will not do that, who are not going to change. And she's on. If you get a lot of students who are A students where they come from, Suddenly you get to VIT, you're from a small town in Limpopo. They say to you, look to your right, look to your left, only one of you is going to qualify. That's the attitude. And these are the people that are supposed to mold you, empower you and give the skills. But the attitude, they're not going to make it. That is part of the problem. We need to have educators whose attitude is, we'll work together and I'll push you so hard yeah. that my success is based on how many of you get through. Those girls who are at the brink of giving up, especially given what we're experiencing right now in society, what, what, what would you say to them? i say a few things to them. I'm that girl who refused to give up. When I failed at medical school, I was crushed. Because you go with these high grades and uh, you think you can conquer the world, and then life just says, maybe not, but you refuse to give up. When they abuse us, the only way to fight back is excelling in everything that we do, because black girls rock. So one of the things I'm focusing on is forming long-term partnerships with corporates. I know the value proposition for me as a black child, as a black woman, uh, trying to grow in corporate South Africa and trying to grow in the bigger, broader South African context. For the corporates, why should they invest in Asaba? What is the value proposition for them? Does it make business sense? It makes business sense. It makes sense for the country. I always say to business people, you know these snippets of violence, these snippets of abuse, which is unfortunately endured by the weaker physically, women and children. It's not going to go away unless we invest in our human resources, this country won't be free. We are not free yet because freedom is not about casting a vote. Freedom is being anywhere 12 midnight as a girl and be free. Freedom is about having access to quality education, quality health, and being the best you are meant to be because the environment nurtures you, invests in you, and business has the power to do that. And their voice is so important because for people who are poor, yeah. they are not around the table. They don't have a voice. But those of us that are educated, the corporates have a voice. But if the voice is just about protecting their small interests, long term, it will work against them. Because the bigger interest is what will sustain this economy. It's key. So Peter, you and I come from a while back. 
when yeah. I was chair of the Actual Women's Committee. Absolutely. I remember sitting down with you and Roseanne in Cape Town and we were talking about the AWC. Yeah. Why was that important? Why was that an important conversation to have? Why the interaction between Asaba and Asa? So I think that um, for me, Asaba and the AWC, in, in, in the AWC is part of Asaba, but the AWC as a whole, both Asaba and the AWC represent important, uh, shall I say, constituencies within the profession. And if we don't listen to those constituencies and we don't engage with those constituencies, then we're not going to do anything that's really going to be helpful for the profession. What does transformation mean to you personally? So for me personally, what transformation means and what diversity means and what inclusion means is that we actually get more voices into the environment. We start to actually appreciate different viewpoints. We start to appreciate one another because we engage and talk with one another. If we don't have that engagement, we're never going to, we're going to bypass each other. And, and so I think that we're all richer by having engaged with one another in terms of diversity and inclusion. So what legacy do you want to leave behind and where do you want our professional to go forward? Yeah. So I think it, the legacy that I, I would like to leave behind is that actually people might one day look back and say there was a change in the tone yeah. of the engagement between uh, with the transformation space um, created by a white president who um, has tried to move the agenda forward. I would like to hope that I've moved the profession forward in the transformation space by actually giving agency and support and strength to organizations like Asaba and AWC. That's my hope in my legacy. Um, but if I've just done my quiet little bit, that's enough for me.